Republicans have selected their own new leadership. The House of Representatives has a new minority leader. That's Don Bratton of Hobbs and a new minority whip, Albuquerque's own Nate Gentry. They also have a new state party chairman, John Billingsley. Tom, let me start with you on this one. And I'm going to start with the state party. Joe Monahan and some other bloggers say this is a repudiation of Jay McCluskey and even Susanna Martinez. Stand by, Whitney, I have a question for you on that. <laughs> After a bitter campaign season, others say it's uh, making a lot of a nothing. Mr. Billingsley was next in line as first vice chair, and it all makes sense. Let's start with Mr. Billingsley. Um, have you read or heard anything from him that says there's going to be a new course direction for the state party? Is there something that you're feeling like he's got aims to do here because obviously Republicans have some work to do to pick up some more things. Well, yeah, I, I think the the agenda before Republicans is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they they have to do much better this next go around if if they want to you know maintain it to be relevant. But as far as uh, Mr. Billingsley is concerned, you know, he, he said some things with regards to you know really engaging the community that I really like. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not necessarily going to quote him you sure, know sure. chapter and verse here, but you know his abil his desire to go out and connect with the community, his desire that he doesn't really want to be, you know really leverage the tools that James. McCleskey mm -hmm. had used as far as you know creating packs to do negative advertising mm -hmm. and negative campaigning mm -hmm. um, and so you know those types of things you know ring I think with the general New Mexico populace. Mm -hmm. Interesting Whitney Lee get to you on this we'll take this as a two-parter <laughs> the first part is easy is this a repudiation of some sort? No I don't think so I mean even John Billingsley came out after his election and said look what the job that Jay does is tough he's a great mm -hmm. strategist he's there to win campaigns and we're going to work together I mean there's no doubt the Republican Party is absolutely 100 percent committed behind getting Susanna Martinez reelected mm -hmm. uh, in the coming two years you're not going to see any division mm -hmm. there won't be much sunlight between the two the bigger problem and we've talked about this a little bit and we did on election night is the difficulty that the parties are going to have in raising money because the campaign finance reform law sure. changes that's why we saw so much independent expenditure activity in this last election cycle. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's unfortunate, but it takes a lot of power and a lot of control away from the parties, both Democrat and Republican, mm -hmm. uh, and puts it into hands of other individuals who are going to run the campaigns the way that they want to run them, and there's not a whole lot of accountability. I mean, within the, like the Republican Party structure, you see people critical of the level of uh, negative campaigning, um, and, and that was probably what the criticism was more of uh, than of any individual, mm -hmm. and um, that's probably not going to stop uh, because you're going to see the independent and expenditure groups come in and push right. the limit. That's so. right. I think you just Please. picked up on the most important thing, which is this uh, sudden change to the power balance mm -hmm. here, where you know the party is losing tons of influence because the money is now outside of it. Mm -hmm. right. And which is more important, you know, the official structure and who gets the name and who is elected or who can you know come up with the biggest bag of cash. It's a, it's a big well, change. Though. The still of when Alan, uh -huh. when Alan Way was the, the chairman of the state Republican Party, he was able to raise a whole lot of money, and people remember kind of the good days. It was, I mean, they remember as being a little heavy-handed, but they also remember that he was able to raise money sure. and get things done. And the truth is, it's just not the same organization anymore. John Billingsley is never going to be able to do what we had done, you know, six, eight, and ten years ago, just because of that structure. So, so. what in fact is his job now? Then, see, this is an interesting. I'm glad you brought this up. This is interesting. Because he wakes up every day and says, all right, I, I don't have to raise money. Well, but he does. But he does, <laughs> right, right. Or he's not going to have the job, voters, right. And and yeah. So it's really, he mentioned grassroots work mm -hmm. in his yeah. uh, post, uh, uh, post post thing mm -hmm. there. Everybody says that. Mm -hmm. Everybody says yep. that. But why is that so different? It's always about the grassroots. Well, is, is, is he going to bring nobody's something? Nobody's figured out how to do it yet. Okay. You know? Well, All right. on our side, anyway. <laughs> 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 Anyways, I'm, that one's going to hurt. Me. No, it's not. No one's going to touch no, you. But the we won't allow you. Like we've got, as, you know, in each party has to figure out a way to get beyond their own comfortable structure of individuals that they always work with and they right. always see at their meetings every month. Mm -hmm. And how do you push out beyond that and go out and talk to your new neighbor that just moved in? And how do you reach out to that new association that just formed and I you know the fact that John Billingsley is talking about doing that I, I think is fantastic and all now that he needs to do now is raise some money to be able to fund those initiatives and make it happen and I think everybody's hopeful that it will happen to the sure. level that it can sure what's this mean for Democrats anything is it just another face is it just another another Alan Way another John Dendall, I mean, we can go through the roster of, of, of history. Does it really mean that much for Democrats who has that position? I think it's been interesting to see the infighting in the Republican Party. Um, you know, I think there are reasonable voices that want to see uh, an end to the negative campaigning and just the nonstop mm -hmm. um, influx of, uh, well, big money, uh, negative campaigning. Within 22 days of this last election, the governor sent out an appeal for $5,000 apiece um, for, for more of the same. Uh, and I think there's some fatigue, and that's what's been great to see, and even in the Republican Party, um, 
uh, on that constant campaigning. I mean, I think people uh, would like the governor to govern and right. to begin to take on these desperate issues that New Mexico has um, with poverty, with income inequality. Uh, you know, those are the issues that they want to see here taken on, not driver's licenses, which, you know, what, where does it fall on people's priorities? 80% of New Mexicans are supportive of her initiative. Yeah, but in, 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 that's compared to jobs, compared to Well, she's I mean, after healthcare? jobs as well. And it wasn't just the Republicans that were accused of negative campaigning. It was the Democratic IEs as well. So. Mm -hmm. Let me get Tom in here. I'll come back to you. That's no, okay. No, we, we can let them keep going. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's not bad. It's not bad, actually. Um, Let's, let's see. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. How, I'm, I'm just curious. I've not met the man. Mm -hmm. I, I've not I, met him. I, Although it is kind of cool to be a, G a GOP chair for Lincoln County. That's actually kind of cool when you think about it. It's like the perfect gig. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> how will he do in urban areas? Raising money, being influential? You see what I mean? Lincoln yeah. County is a whole other stretch from Bernalillo County. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, I think the fundamental issues facing the Republicans right now is that, yes, they have a new leader, but the infrastructure is still very much the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's changed, I don't, I haven't heard about it. And this is the same infrastructure that basically, you know, left Janice Arnold Jones out to dry, mm -hmm. uh, didn't necessarily come to Heather Wilson and her support. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those, you know, granted, there are different political strategies of when you, in, you know, put money into a campaign and when you provide that support. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to not really use that as a building year, um, to try and, you know, build for that next election to say, okay, great, well, we've, this one we, we might not win, mm -hmm. but let's not throw out the future elections with the bathwater. Go sure. ahead and test different things, build new coalitions. Sure. And that part has not changed as far as that think tank. So I think the Republicans, the big challenge for them is to figure out the organizational effort that the Democrats have been very successful mm -hmm. about uh, and really taking a page out of their playbook and saying, okay, what did the Democrats do that was so successful that right. we could apply over here? Mm -hmm. And what does that, let me get back to you in a second, but what does that mean if that gets solved? What does that mean for statewide office holder seeker people here with a better grassroots, more effective grassroots campaign for the GOP here? Is that the, is that the difference that's been missing in your view? I, I think it's a big component that's that's been missing and a lot of it comes to funding. I mean, the Democratic mm -hmm. groups are much better at funding and putting their money in, into gra the, the ground warfare. And when uh, Romney uh, basically pulled out of the state and said he wasn't really going to campaign here, mm -hmm. the, what normally comes into the state through the Republican Party and through the different campaigns just did not happen this year. So um, we were not funded, mm -hmm. the Republicans were not funded. Uh, at a level that they have been on presidential campaigns in the past. And you're right, it, it should have been and could have been a building year, but that was the presidential campaign's decision and nobody else's. Mm -hmm. Don Bratton, um, certainly not a new name, but new minority whip's going to be interesting. I've, you know, again, I've mentioned our colleague Dan Foley and the fun job of being a minority whip. It just doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Your sense of him and the job in this new environment of... Uh, well, he's no Dan Foley, <laughs> 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 which, which is not an insult to him right. uh, necessarily. Um, I think that it, it's not going to be a huge change, okay. I, I don't necessarily think, over there. Um, obviously, the structure uh, in both uh, chambers is going to be really different. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to expect. Honestly, right. I don't. That's fair enough. Would you agree with that? It's, it's yeah. kind of a little bit of an unknown quantity. Well, you know, the Republicans have fresh, you know, fresh faces in the leadership positions. You know, I like Nate Gentry. Mm -hmm. uh, he happens to be my representative. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really thrilled with that because sure. it means, hey, now my district will get a little bit extra love, hopefully, mm -hmm. from somebody. I don't know who. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I, so I think it's really good that Representative Gentry is in that particular position. Sure, yeah. And let's finish uh, your thoughts on Gentry and, and, and Don Bratton as well. What, what do you, what's your sense of those two positions? I think a good combination because in Don Bratton, you've got many years experience in that chamber, a very intelligent, very dedicated, very hardworking, um, conservative individual. You can pretty much count on you know everything that he says he's going to do. I, I've always been a big fan of his. I'm happy that he's there. I also like you know, Representative Tom Taylor a lot too. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think with Nate Gentry in there, you're going to get um, a, new, uh, a new point of view. Uh, he's only been there a couple of years he's he's younger mm -hmm. um, he's gonna you know dig in and work hard I think you're gonna see a little bit of Foley esque probably in Nate Gentry <laughs> and uh, you know so some some interest in that might need some explaining but that's okay that's for a whole nother show <laughs> no, for another I'm done. time that's all I'm <laughs> about there you that. go <laughs> so right there we're going straight to our on the clock segment now with a lonely swift minute to get through each topic we choose here let's start down south did someone Park City Council break the state sunshine law when it appointed a mayor earlier this year the answer from Attorney General Gary King's office is in conclusive, Whitney, anything concerning that opinion to you? Well, it's really hard to prove a rolling quorum. That's the issue. It was, did they actually meet official? you know, did they plan to meet one-on-one-on-one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one -on -one -on -one right. and um, avoid the, the uh, Open Meetings Act? It's just tough to prove. I don't know. I'm not going to go out there and say whether I thought sure. it happened or didn't, but 
How, uh, good point, Javier. How are we to know what happened or didn't happen? Yeah. So how is the Gary King's office supposed to know either? Sunland yeah. Park is just—it's a—it's a mess. It's the governor's uh, poster boy for corruption and right. uh, election fraud. And and I, I think that you know it's a good example of how election fraud can happen um, from elected officials. Uh, the, the fraud that's been talked about, as far as like uh, the accusations of voter fraud around the state mm -hmm. by individuals, is basically non-existent. I mean, the only times it's happened is when uh, mm -hmm. a Republican plant uh, you know has um, uh, made a, a news story out of that. No. Last 10 seconds to you, my man. Yeah, I think that, you know, it's definitely, you know, there's legal issues there, rolling quorum, do they post agendas late? But as Javier said, it's really a perception issue. I mean, yeah. trust in government in Sunland Park right now. Yeah, there you go. From the from your organization's point of view, not as a speaking for it, but your sense of that, did the, Gary King take the right approach here? Um, I think Whitney said it right. It is. It's really hard to prove, but mm -hmm. it's not. That's not really the point here. Mm -hmm. We know that this is a community and a body that has problems with transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, these meetings are conducted half in Spanish and half in English. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they're very rarely in full compliance mm -hmm. with transparency laws. So um, this is one instance where they maybe had a rolling quorum. Uh, it wasn't proven, but it's going to be a long struggle, uh, struggle to bring them into compliance, sure. as it is with many small communities around the state. And you would know. Absolutely. Tony Hillerman, author of the Joe Leaphorn and Jim Chi Mysteries, may be gone, but his characters will live on. His daughter, Anne, has penned a new novel in the series. Now, is Anne Hillerman tampering with something sacred here, Gwyneth, or doing the right thing by carrying on her father's legacy? This is a high-risk proposition yeah. to me. I think she's very brave to try to do it. Mm -hmm. If she succeeds, fantastic. She's got a long, lucrative career ahead of her penning these novels. Right. If she doesn't, it will be painful for her, I think, on a professional but very personal level, sure. too. I wonder how much wiggle room the public's going to give her on this. You know what I mean? That's a tricky deal here. I, I think the, those who are really into Lee Porn and Chi are going to go, okay, we're being very critical on this. Those who aren't are just going to cheer her on and say, yeah. you know what, carry on your dad's legacy. It was a wonderful uh, you know, compliment for everything New Mexico's about. Mm -hmm. And we can only assume she's doing it for a lot of the right reasons. For the family, she wants to put this work out there. People like it. They enjoy it. It's globally embraced these characters. So why not? Well, I think uh, good t good honor for trying to do it. I, I completely agree. Um, I, you know, have at it. <laughs> there you go, Javier. What do you think from an artistic standpoint? I mean, it's no. it's high risk. It really it is. is. You're right. <laughs> and it's it's only because New Mexico and its beautiful sense of place is so difficult to put into words. Yeah. And I think we need authors like Tony Hillerman and his daughter and Rodolfo Naya to uh, take on that challenge. There you go, right on the bell there. Many post offices have been displaying copies of Albuquerque Journal's the article assuring New Mexicans their driver's licenses are still good enough to travel without, without a passport. There's been a rush of passport applications before the Real ID Act goes into effect next month, but it's states, not individu individuals that have to be in compliance, Tom. The Governor Martinez says licenses issued to immigrants are part of New Mexico's problem. Is she overplaying this angle to make a point that she wants to make about <laughs> driver's licenses here? Uh, yeah, well, the point, plain and simple, yes. Yeah. I mean, everybody's hitting the panic button, mm -hmm. um, and I think your statement says it perfectly that when people, when the post office is posting up the Albuquerque Journal instead of official government documents <laughs> and people are believing the journal, yes. then that says something about our society. Well said, sir. <laughs> there you go. I just put renewed in. my passport, and I, I put an express rush on it because I knew that there was, right. it came back in a week. Oh, seriously? One week. How interesting. Well, I'm good to go. I don't now you can anybody travel. else. Right. Nope. Only kidding. Only kidding. Gene, even Senator Udall said that we've got an issue that we've got to take care of. The problem is, is that we can't even get the, the Department of Homeland Security to tell the state one way or another whether or not we're going to need passports come the 15th of January. As the law states right now, it goes into effect. Mm -hmm. The governor hasn't done anything wrong. She's telling, letting everybody know what is going to happen unless we get some kind of a stay on that thing on the 15th. Mm -hmm. I differ altogether. It's, it, it was a manufactured crisis. Uh, this is what the governor is doing to try and score political points and create some cover for her stance on uh, uh, driver's licenses for immigrants. Mm -hmm. And she got called well, on the carpet Tom for Udall, it by the uh, Department of Homeland Security. Then Senator Udall is going to be blamed for the same thing. I love that. A little argument on the bells. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's like background music. It was beautiful. When is a cord of wood not a cord? When it's a load. All right, stay with me here. The State Department of Agriculture <laughs> has warned Santa Fe's oldest wood yard that selling load by the load is a load, and they and everyone else has to sell by the cord or a fraction of a cord. Still with me? This is a burning issue for homeowners. I've been burned on this myself <laughs> when I first moved here. It's not just for ambience, Javier. It, 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 this is a very interesting story to me. I'm glad we decided to take this one on because, you know, 
a Ford F-150 truck bed versus a three-quarter ton dually truck bed, you can call both those things a load, and those are vastly different amounts of wood. Is our state right to, to, to have this be a cord, a partial cord, a third accord, two-thirds accord? Should sure. we just go there? It's, it's an important issue for northern New Mexicans dealing with the cold. Uh, there's also creative ways that you can stack the wood and uh, right. play Tetris <laughs> with the wood so that it becomes... Uh, with the hollow <laughs> center? <laughs> so it looks, I've, I've seen that. I've seen that. So it's a concern. Actually. It's a concern. concern. I've watched what landscaping it? materials, too, because I had that issue getting some rocks mm -hmm. delivered, and you're like, that is not what it looked like when I, you know, when they shoveled it out. So you, right. you have to watch everywhere, and I'm glad that the state does have regulations in place for it. Yeah. But the folks selling the wood say they, they've been clear. A load is a load. They're not saying cord, so the fellow that complained has no right to complain. They never said they sold him a cord. I don't it's think it's odd, clear it? at all. Yeah. I, and you know, I, I've been buying wood lately. I have a wood burning stove. Yeah. I knew none of this. I would have thought a dollar a log. Who knows? I mean, you could tell me anything. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but we have to have a consistent yeah. system of measuring these things. And when you call around and you say, how much is a cord? How much is a cord? How much is a cord? Mm -hmm. We all have to be talking about the same thing if we want to compare or it's not fair to consumers. Do you have a Which fireplace? Is, there's a, I do, okay. yes. There's about as much confusion about what a cord is as how much wood would a woodchuck chuck and a woodchuck <laughs> woodchuck wood. <laughs> Which is one cord. Very good. <laughs> and that woodchuck say four well played, by eight, John. four <laughs> by four by eight. However, that makes up a cord, 128 yes. cubic feet. Now, next subject, beautiful on the outside, empty on the inside. The new state district courthouse in Santa Fe should be ready to open in February. But unless furnishings and equipment get fully funded for it, it's going to be a lot of attorneys sitting on floors and doing other things besides sitting on chairs. The governor vetoed money last year and Santa Fe County won't foot the whole bill, Gwyneth, and can the governor possibly veto this funding again if this comes up? Is that actually a possibility? I think the average person does not care who makes this right <laughs> at all. Good but point. we built a fancy new courthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, justice has to be done. Business has to get taken care of. However they come to a fix for this, they just need to do it because I don't think anyone has the appetite for finger pointing <laughs> or blame. <laughs> I'm waiting for some defendant to plea the, the courthouse is not finished. Right. Plea. I didn't get a fair hearing because everyone's upset because no one's no furniture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, it, how does this work in the course of doing your business every day? Well, it's hard to get find compassion for you know everyone involved in this particular thing right. because when you look at government officials, when you look at attorneys and our perception survey, both are very low. They don't have a high trust level amongst New Mexicans. Right. I think most New Mexicans, as a result, would want to see that this thing just get put the chairs in and let's move on and talk about more important things. Right, Diego, would you agree with that, Whitney? Just well, no, let's just move it's on. Probably seven hundred thousand dollars worth of chairs. Uh, you know, it's a good example of why we need capital outlay, outlay reform in the state. That's what the governor is pointing about. Um, Santa Fe bought this property, did not realize that it was completely contaminated with gasoline, drove the cost of the entire project up millions and millions of dollars. Uh, the question is, who's supposed to pay for that? Is that you know, Santa Fe or is it the state? Um, I'm, I'm glad that the governor vetoed it and is making the, the county figure out how to pay the bill. Give me the last word to my man here. I think the governor was trying to score some cheap headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't compromise the state's judicial system, and that's what's happened with this. Mm -hmm. uh, she, just like she vetoed other projects like Main Street funding, uh, lots of capital outlay that would have created jobs in the state at the worst possible time. Sure. What a great time. If I don't see all of you guys, have a great holiday. It's hey, really Christmas good to see you. Thanks. It's good to see you again. Good to see Always. You. Tom? Oh, man. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs>